Hello and welcome to Halo RV, everybody. My name is Josh, the RV nerd. This is about 13,000 pounds, the beautiful 32R LTS Jayco Pinnacle. What I love about this thing, like this is a step above where most manufacturers stop making fifth wheels. Jayco is rare. They go above up into the Pinnacle series. That's probably why it's called the Pinnacle. It's at the top of uh, where where you tend to see things made. <laughs> um, this is a, a maximum width wide body, eight and a half foot wide, giving us the most possible space in every single room. But what I love about this RV, and really what I think is its truest definition, is that it is the smallest of the pinnacles. It comes in, I believe it's about 36 feet and change, but it gives us all of the big, beautiful luxury that you expect out of something called a pinnacle uh, w without necessarily like being 45 foot long. We are totally carpetless. We have dual whisper air, we're third air ready, massive hot, cold climate package on these things. Um, the uh, exterior doesn't look too awful facelifted, but that farmhouse decor is looking absolutely fantastic in here today. But if that's not your thing, don't worry. They don't force farmhouse down your throat. You get a couple different options that you get to select from there. What's interesting about these is like everything is bigger, just more over the top by default. Like you have a king bed standard in this. Uh, you don't have to lug around the power cord because it's on like a, a power retract wheel. You're going to get those awesome convenience cush factors like that. Now if you're looking back here, you're actually interestingly seeing its sister floor plan in North Point as well, the 310 RLTS. They're almost identical in layout and sometimes people go, well what is the difference between these? I've got a separate video kind of breaking that down in a little more detail. It was related to a 21 model but it'll mostly give you the idea. Here's the best way I can describe it. A North Point? That's for somebody who's a manager at a company. Pinnacle. That's for the people that own the company. You're the baller, shot caller. And even though this is the shortest, smallest Pinnacle Jayco makes, uh, it, it, it still has every bit of the glitz, the glitter, the high class look and feel. That's one of the things that's, I, I think, very cool about this. I think that that's one of the things that makes this pound for pound maybe the best value Pinnacle out there. Like, you still have all the, the fancy razzmatazz like that, uh, just look at that four burner insignia stove under that convection microwave over there. You've just got windows everywhere in this. That's another thing I really like about this one. The way that they handle their entertainment center gives us more windows, more light, more visibility. But as we go through, one of the things that you're going to see here is this RV also has uh, like day night roller shades and that nice tall window in the entry door. I purposely left that shade a little bit crooked, by the way, just so that it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. So you can see it does actually have the shade in the entry door, which, man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if we're up in a, uh, a luxury fifth wheel segment, it darn well better have that shade in the entry door. I, I couldn't imagine uh, dropping this kind of coin on something and then needing to add a bunch of little piddly accessory upgrades. That just doesn't make sense to me. What does make sense to me, though, is this completely carpetless layout that they have right here. And I love how the flooring uh, in the slide matches the flooring in like everything else. You got the little Stacy Stewart collection uh, badging down there with a little factory tag. The good news is that uh, factory tag is actually on the removable Stacy Stewart labeling, by the way. So kind of keep that in mind. That, by the way, is a power theater heat massage seat right there. Uh, center uh, armrest actually opens up a little bit, which is a perfect little remote control storage place. And now, speaking of remote controls, you see how there's a switch on the wall and a little black box next to that theater seat. What are those things? Well, first of all, just a good look at the day-night shades that we have over here. And remember, these are really heavy tinted windows. So even if you just pull this, during the daytime, you've effectively gained uh, like 100% privacy, pretty darn close. And then you can always blot out the sun. This is really nice though. These right here, if it's screaming hot outside, all of these windows can turn this thing into a greenhouse. Now, don't get me wrong, this has a, a very good AC system. You actually have dual whisper ducted centralized air, dual 15K Coleman quiet units. So it's very powerful. It's uh, also not extremely loud. So you don't gotta sit here and crank the TV up to 11 whenever you need to, you know, try to watch Maury Povich? Why is that the first thing that came in my head? That's, you know, some of these jokes I had were funnier when I was younger, and now they're just starting to get sad because it's like, oh, you're getting older. <laughs> I got a long way to go yet, but I, I see it happening. Anyway, let's talk about remote controls. That's what this guy is right here. 
You're going to see a bunch of these throughout the RV. Every one of these does something a little different based on the context of where it's located in the RV. So here in the theater seat, I don't want to be opening and closing the slides, but I'd like to be able to turn on the outside lighting if I hear a funny noise at night. You know, Ghostbusters, I can see what goes bump in the night. I can turn on my upper and lower accent lights. I can turn off the ceiling lights. I can turn off the lights over the dining. So, like, if you're sitting here at the end of the night and you decide you want to power that uh, recliner seat back and just kind of let your eyeballs do their thing, you can also not be staring directly at the lights and being blinded like Manford Man's Earth Band. Or Springsteen, if that's your preference. Now, the discussion of those switches leads me to another point I like to, uh, to, to look at on these. Every single light in this thing uh, has, has, like, a wall switch or something like that. You never have to go through and individually, manually click anything in here. Now, uh, again, we've got that dual whisper ducted air, but look at the, uh, the the vaulted ceiling that we have in this. And notice all of that overhead accent lighting. Also with that, there's lower accent lighting through multiple rooms of the RV. So if you wake up at night, you need to kind of figure out where you're at uh, in the RV and uh, navigate a little bit. Well, you can do that here. Now, one of the key differences between this and a North Point is that this is 102 inch wide versus 96 inch wide. It's eight and a half instead of eight foot wide. So it looks like a smaller sofa than the North Point. It's the same sofa. It has bigger side stands, which I think is actually uh, pretty cool. And I, again, the window coverage in this, they used and just really maximized every single opportunity for some I, I just think really amazing coverage here. Got that televator right there with the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. And it's a couple's rig. But if uh, the, the gentleman of the house gets in trouble or if you decide to have some guests over, you do have that handy, uh, again, extra large hide -a bed sofa on the back. And this is what I'm going to call cuddling compliant. The theater seat has that hard fixed wedge in between you. I don't know. If you if you just feel like getting a little bit closer, you could do that here. Or what you could do is you could just put your head on that left-hand pillow, stretch your legs out across that longer sofa, and even from that position, you can still enjoy a good shot at the TV because that TV does not pivot. It's just straight up and down since it's in that power lift. But I, 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 like here, let me actually show you. If I sit down over here, like I was just describing, you can still see it plain as day. It's, it's perfectly fine, I, I think. That's my opinion. Now, through the uh, kitchen here, we're going to get all this open in just a second. I want to point out that you have uh, residential soft close drawers just for that, you know, silky smooth sort of function right there. And as we go through and open everything up, you're going to see, despite being the smallest pinnacle, I actually think arguably it has one of the better kitchens of the lineup. So to begin with, this island's a real piece of work. And I, I don't mean that like... The way I mean it with my Uncle Gary, that guy's a real piece of work. It starts with this gigantic uh, butcher's block countertop extension cutting board whack attacker. Uh, it can fend off intruders or it can realign the disposition of uh, unagreeable husbands, according to my wife. Uh, I, I've, I, I don't argue with her about that because if I do, she, she hits me with the karate chop board again. Now, the nice little touches, like the, the built-in sink holders there, for that new updated uh, skirted stainless farm sink. You know, a, a, they've been doing something like that for a while, but it was a split sink. Going to a new big farm sink, I, I think, is an interesting, brave departure, but it's something I'm on board with, because, frankly, I think it makes it easier to handle bigger pots and pans. Now, on the way over, I also want to take a quick second to look at that second mini faucet right there. That's the patent-pending Jayco exclusive drinking water system. Basically, this RV has its own separate five-gallon Culligan jug that we'll see in the basement so that you don't have to bring along a whole bunch of, like, little, you know, plastic bottles of water. You're, you're using less material. You're lugging along extra stuff. So whether you're, you're liking the idea of it for, like, the, uh, the green environmental aspects or just the convenience factor, either way, it's a great thing. I don't want to miss the fact that we do have a handy shoe garage built into these steps, as well as a central vacuum and the electric dust pan. So you can do the electric slide with all the little dirty things that fall onto the floor, as they happen to do from time to time. Handy little coffee bar here by the door. Those two little black dots, by the way, are uh, thermistors. They're thermal temperature sensors. 
uh, that talk to the uh, the J command system, the BM Pro unit. Uh, that is uh, uh, one of those things that, you know, if you decide to sync to it with your phone, you could be anywhere. You don't, uh, I, the joke I use all the time is you could be in bed and you don't have to put on pants and you could crank the air up or down however you please, you know. <laughs> Now, the, the arrangement here, the floor plan is very similar to the 310 North Point. It is slightly different in a couple ways, uh, like uh, the way that they handle a couple little kitchen things. Like, you see the difference in the drawers there, but look at that giant oven. A pinnacle is not just an everyday camper. It's definitely, you know, a full-time RV and glamper type job. So, uh, being able to actually cook a big meal in here, because some people are going to use this like a seasonal residence or something like that. That's something you got to be able to do. Uh, that's why you have that larger convection microwave oven up there. And something I want to point out, uh, remember that, uh, you know, countertop extension? When you're not using it, you could tuck it away like under the bed or maybe stuff it behind a couch or something if you wanted to. But you can just set it on top of that beautiful four burner insignia stove. And there you go. Uh, up top here, one thing I want to mention is uh, not just the hidden hinges, but this is all hardwood cabinetry. There's no sticker wraps involved here. It is screws into all wood. Uh, it's uh, just one of those nice kind of indicators of a, a real high echelon product, I think. Now, when the TV's not, I don't want to say in the way, in play, perhaps, you can use this like a cool little serving station, I think. Um, or, or not. It just, it just depends. I think everyone's going to find their own little way about that. Now, over here beside the sofa, Notice how those little side stands have little pockets that flip open. I call that not an ounce of space gone to waste. That is one of the original nerdisms. It's one of the less silly nerdisms also, admittedly. And the bathroom over here, I think, is another instance where at a glance you say, eh, it's just like the North Point. But the more you look at it, the more scrutiny and specificity you have here, the more obvious it becomes. Now, the, the main things like an easy step in big walk-in shower, excellent leg room over here. If I'm being picky, it's a little tight on the right-hand elbow. Um, I don't know if maybe there's like a, a stud in the floor or something like that where they weren't able to shift the toilet to the left a little bit. Every now and then you will run into a little hiccup like that. But a, a couple details. I want to start zeroing in for you here. Now, of course, you've got the, uh, just like you have in the, the living room and the kitchen, that rain-sensoring max air vent fan up here. With that vaulted ceiling, you have all kinds of tasty headroom up in this thing. But look at the shower hardware. Look at that noise. How cool looking is that guy right there? Uh, also has a little, uh, you know, handheld sprayer wand, which is a handy dandy little thing right there. The um, a little corner like shampoo holder uh, allegedly also works for shower beers, whether you prefer domestics or like a foreign IPA or something like that. Yes. Now this is also very cool. A lot of showers have this fiberglass molded seat in the corner. Some, for some people, it can be intrusive. You can kind of trip on it. That teak seat can fold up, and it is 300-pound rated. So it can hold you. That's something I think is very cool. They did an interesting little thing over here, and personally, I'm all for it, especially when you see what's going on below the sink. Hang with me here. They got rid of the cabinet that was barely deep enough to keep your Lipitor. You notice how it's still the nice backlit morning mirror, which is fantastic. They've gone to this oversized vessel sink because it opened up more space for more storage below the sink. Check this out. You know what? The, the, the people at Pinnacle, they're probably going to eat their hair when I say this. I think they did too much. I think they should have only given us drawers on one side and space for a wastebasket on the other. And if you see my, my Coachman Freedom Express videos, you've seen the utensil drawer. Well, I've never seen somebody do something like that in the bathroom of a fifth wheel. That is some of the best use of space under the counter I have ever ever seen a plus work boys and and, and ladies men, men and women the people of jaco you've done well oh man i'm <laughs> and the the bedroom's another area where you see a couple little touches above a north point like just the the dressing up of the entertainment center a little bit but remember those little remote jobs i was telling you about you've got again different ones in the rv do different things in different places uh, over here, like in the bed slide itself, and notice I'm keeping my feet off the furniture. <laughs> this, uh, will activate, you can activate all of your inside and outside lighting. You can activate your, uh, accent lighting if you just need to sneak to the bathroom at night. 
You can also turn on the main, or, or turn off, as it were, the main ceiling cabin lighting, as well as the reading lights directly above us here. And I'm trying to go slow not to make you motion sick. I know that my videos run long, but if I start waving the camera everywhere, I know that it bothers me, and I have to assume it bothers somebody else a little bit. Down here, though, uh, they, they, they just continue to impress. Now, remember, I keep talking about that lower accent lighting. You see that down there? That is, it, one switch will activate all of the lower accent lights through the entire RV. So you can see what you're doing at night. That is very smart. That is very, very cool. Then there's all the little touches, like uh, like the laundry hamper in the closet, like that full under king bed storage that we're looking at right here, which obviously is a very good place to keep those guest chairs, uh, along with that, that sink, uh, like, or that stove, well, uh, stove or countertop extension, cutting board. You get the idea. Oh, by the way, this is small. This is very cool. I don't want you to miss this. Over here in this corner, you got all kinds of different outlets. You know what else you have? Check this out. You have a little wireless charge pad. Look at that. Even on just 12 volt power, that fires right up and will let you, uh, you, you don't necessarily have to have a wire, another USB plug dangling around everything. Oh, by the way, the lighting here in this closet, you can turn off or on or activate for motion mode. Now, as I'm backing up, I wanna point out the fact, Jayco gives us uh, more connectivity options by actually factory installing the LTE Wi-Fi uh, access point up there. That's that funny box. And that other little funny box to the left is the whisper ducted air system because if you don't see the square, then you won't hear the air. That's a fact, y'all. <laughs> King bed is standard, by the way, in a pinnacle. You actually option down to a queen. But because they standardize for a king, they actually leave a little more room around the bed. Obviously, with the queen, you could gain plus five inches on either side. This extra deep bed slide that they've gone to on the Jayco Luxury Fifth Wheels, they do it wherever they can. It almost makes the bed look small, but it makes the floor space look absolutely huge. Now, speaking of huge, I'd like to introduce you to the biggest, hugest defect in this RV. This guy. <laughs> Actually, the reason I want to step in front of the camera here is just so you can see how much room you have here. Uh, I'm 6'2", 6'3", with shoes and hat, depending on what I'm wearing in a given time. This vaulted ceiling. I mean, look at how much room is above my head here. And I'm doing an ET phone home neck stretch. And you can say, oh, sure. Yeah, that's easy to do at the top of the vault. So what if I step all the way over here against the sidewall? I still got plenty of room. I'm still not hitting my head on anything. This is nice. If you're a taller person, it is hard to find a fifth wheel that fits you better in the upper decks than a North Point or a Pinnacle. They just, they really do it well. It's part of the reason though, they're not the lightest weight. More space means more construction, adds more weight, adds more cost, but it's, I mean, do you want to be comfortable or not? Would you like a house with seven foot ceilings or eight foot ceilings? Seven foot ceilings are sufficient. Eight foot feels a lot better. Same kind of logic goes into one of these, I think. And flipping around here, closing up the slides for road mode. Uh, obviously, you can get to the bedroom with the slides closed because I'm sitting on the bed with the door open right now. The bathroom's a no-brainer since it's basically just a hop, skip, and jump, uh, you know, through the hallway from the entry door to our left right there. When we get downstairs... It's a little bit of a sideways two-step, but you can slide through here. Uh, I, I could imagine some bigger folks might have a little bit of a challenge with that. At my 200-pound uh, pandemic body right now, it, it's definitely a, a squeeze for me. I'm belly rubbing against the slide fascia, but I can get through here. Now, something I want to mention is we're looking again at that two-way gas electric refrigerator today. It is more travel accessible uh, in some ways than the uh, residential refrigerator just because of the way that everything kind of interacts here with the, uh, with, with the island. The residential refrigerator, you'll always be able to get to a, a chunk of the fridge over here, but the left-hand door and the freezer, you're going to lose out on. Whereas on this two-way fridge, I know that I'm like right up in your face on this thing. You see that you can pretty much get to the whole thing, so if you need to grab a snack or, or take a nap or take a crap. You can make that happen in this floor plan. And I don't know how well it translates on video here, but when you see this park next to something else, you see that extra width in the body. Like sometimes you're like, eh, six inches, big deal. Every single room gets like half a foot bigger. 
I mean, you can, you can tell. Now, if you're going to, like, if you want, man, I'm looking for top shelf kind of stuff, but I still want to tow and go, that's where this one comes in. It's very close to that 35, 36 foot mark, which is a real magic sweet spot when you're towing. Uh, something like this pairs up very nicely. Like if you don't want to go dually, uh, a single rear wheel, one ton, will be a very good pairing for one of these right here. Um, the uh, fact that we've got the dual power awnings on this, giving us some <laughs> awesome, frankly, Kind of like I think this has a better kitchen than some of the bigger pinnacles. I think this has more shaded patio awning space than most of the other pinnacles. Because some of the other pinnacles, they have so many slides, it ends up breaking up the awning or eating up some of the awning space. This one, I think, has the best patio action. And since it's the smallest pinnacle, it leaves you the most room on your uh, campsite for the patio action. Little peek over there at, uh, I call it the Culligan jug, but uh, the, the drinking water jug. Remember, uh, if you get the residential refrigerator, that is actually what feeds the water dispenser and the ice maker, so you're not, you know, eating dirty ice or whatever in your drinks. Um, up top here, you're going to see the uh, double-sided radiant barrier material used through the entirety of that upper deck, not just the basement or the roof, but also the nose cap and the slide floors. Plus, you may have noticed a forced air heat duct in there. There's TV hookups on the bottom right of the screen, motion lighting, central vacuum cleaner over here on the left. And if you look down here, you see how it actually has that little like uh, cable feed port. This thing is like my Uncle Gary on a Saturday night. It is fully skirted. <laughs> uh, the, uh, between the entry door and the baggage door, there's a little black circle. Uh, above a bigger black circle. The lower circle is an outside speaker. The little circle is actually a little cold water sprayer port, which is cool. You might notice that that, that is a wider, taller entry door. A lot of brands do that, like my, all the Montanas, the North Points, they're all very good about doing that. Those are the, oh, I call them zero gravity stable steps though, so you don't throw your shoulder out and blow your rotator cuff messing with those things. And look what they're doing here, over here on the North Points and Pinnacles. They are uh, doing this interesting color band between the windows, and it just it looks like one monster panoramic window out here. It's such a cool look on that. Uh, the uh, outside TV here kind of hides in, they call it that little dinette buffet. That's part of the reason that's a little boxy. Uh, I, I, I really like these personally. Um, Mr. Halet, I, I'm what's called an SOB with a PhD. I'm a son of the boss whose parent had a dealership. And uh, my father, uh, Mr. Halet, Married my mother, has always treated me well. That's why her last names are different, in case you ever notice where it says Winters on the back of my name tag. But when we go family camping, like we've spent a weekend uh, in, in his RV with him, he loves that outside TV. We don't sit outside and watch TV. What we do, though, is we just turn it to some local channel so that we can get some kind of news and updates on local weather and events and things like that. That's just it, It's just that nice kind of almost AM radio white noise. Now, over here, you see the J port. If you're not familiar with this thing, it is essentially a two inch receiver hitch off the side of the trailer, and it is heavy duty. It can literally, uh, the, the little support arm that you can get on this optionally with the uh, 22 inch Blackstone griddle option, uh, as, you're see, as you saw there, it can literally hold uh, grown men. But no matter what, you're gonna have that little propane cooker hooker right there. But whether it's a little wastebasket attachment, uh, whether you option on the larger 22 inch Blackstone, uh, or I don't know, one of the things that I, I say that works well on these, you could always use it for a bumper dumper. Although I don't know that your neighbors would appreciate that. Um, speaking of hitches, on the back, you're all hitched up. You've got a 3,000 pound towing hitch with four-way uh, wiring harness and safety chain hooks. That was originally um, standardized years ago in the Jayco Eagle HT small fifth wheel series. And enough people finally went, okay, I'm tired of it. I bought a bigger, badder, awesomer fifth wheel with more awesome sauce uh, per, per cubic foot mixed into this thing. Why do I not get that cool hitch? And they said, all right, you have a very good point. Similarly, something that started on Eagle, the J Smart lighting package. So not just rear and side camera prepped, but and not just reverse travel lighting, because a lot of other brands have started adopting that to kind of cheese it a little bit. But Jayco's still one of the only ones that does this. If you flip on that left-hand turn signal, like all of the, the marker and clearance lights down the left side of this rig, they're gonna blink so that other people understand. I, I, the Big Bertha over here, she's about to change lanes and I, it would behoove you to make a little bit of room. <laughs> this is another one of those, um, 
I kind of describe sometimes a pinnacle. It's sort of like a, a legacy Montana in some ways because uh, a standard on a pinnacle is uh, like you have the 50 amp powered cord reel and I still cannot figure out a way to say that without sounding like an idiot. So it's a 50 amp power cord and it's a 12 volt powered cord reel. Why? Somebody do me a favor and leave me a comment and tell me a better way to say that where I don't sound like a drunken idiot all the time. Because it's important to me that I only sound like a drunken idiot some of the time. Now, if we're getting low, getting low, getting low here, uh, you can see the Goodyear Endurance Beast radials. That is an American-made tire rated for 87 miles an hour. And kind of like the Pinnacle, if you ever stood it next to something else, you'd see it's bigger. If you just put these next to a standard Goodyear Endurance radial, you see how they're just massive. You can't just take these tires and throw them on an Eagle. It won't fit. You see that uh, heavy-duty Moride suspension package in there. You may have noticed the blue Moride shock dampening pin box. That is, those are the first two parts of the uh, the Jayco Five Star Ride and Handling Package. Then you factor in the Goodyears, the Dexter axles, the the wet bolt fasteners, the bronze bushings that can be lubricated, all that stuff. This is something that is made to be able to ride down the road, uh, stay put together, things like that. Now, I sometimes forget to open this little thing, and you look in it, and you're like, dude. There's nothing there. It's pre-prep for a SantaCon macerator pump system. So if that's something you want, you don't just, like, it doesn't just have to be built from the factory that way. You can uh, upfit it onto an existing Pinnacle RV. We'll do a couple of those every year at Halitz. It's really not uh, too hard of a process since Jayco did all the prep work for us. Now, it pretty much goes without saying, but if I don't say it, somebody goes, he didn't say it, so it must not be true. Yes, this is what you want to call four seasons. I dislike that phrasing, but I know that that's the accepted vernacular. Uh, it, it is hot, cold, camp tested, zero degree proven, you know. Jayco actually uh, hot, cold chambers every single one of their uh, pinnacle floor plans. They don't, that's another thing. They don't do it on just like, oh, we got one pinnacle to pass. They must all be good. They test every single floor plan just in the event that there's something for some reason they missed, like uh, they need to add an extra heat duct somewhere. They're just very, very detailed when it comes to that stuff. Now, up front here, uh, what we're looking at on this one, we have this generator prepped, and where that's very cool, uh, like you can still use it as storage. There's still the space there over there for six batteries, but what is really cool about North Point and Pinnacle Gen Prep, it literally doubles your propane capacity because normally over here, you would see dual 30 pound propane tanks. What we're looking at right now are dual 40s. If you're doing the math, you're like, uh, hey, I'm not a math, but if I ain't double, that's because there's a whole additional tank, 40 pound tank added to this when you go to gen prep. Now, when you, if you don't have the gen prep, you'll have two 30 pound tanks on the other side, and this will just be open, which is actually still cool that it's, it's always spaced that way, because if you wanted to, you could always get a free floating hot swap tank. Or again, if you get the gen prep package, you add this here. Now, that's one of the things I want to point out because Jayco's gen prep package costs more than most other brands because you're getting an entire additional propane bottle and two other bigger propane bottles and some extra propane connections. But if you do the math, if you really uh, write, uh, you know, smoke all the numbers out, if you um, uh, get the gen prep and an actual own in generator on one of these, the, the cost of it basically washes out. So maybe the gen prep only is a little more expensive, but the double the propane, Man, if you're gonna be doing some like winter camping and really cooking that furnace, you ain't gonna regret having extra propane because what if you get snowed in for a couple days, you can't go swap tanks. That could be the difference between sweating it out and freezing it out. Also, one other thing I haven't mentioned, but you probably noticed, optional slide awnings. So like I said, if what you're looking for, you want that big over the top luxury, but again, you're not looking for a big over the top size to tow around. I think this size is ideal because it's it's still big enough that if you just want to park it there and use it like a home away from home, you are all set to do that. And obviously Jayco's two plus three year warranty coverage with allowances for full-time RVing is uh, there to support you for doing that. But it's not so large that like getting it there is is, is a white knuckle nail biter. Not not compared to, to some of these gigantic monstrosities that can exist out there, you know. Don't get me wrong, it ain't, a, it, it ain't an ultralight. <laughs> but it's, it's, 
it's not that bad in terms of towing size and whatnot. Plus, you got that awesome ride and handling package, the Goodyears, the TPMS. Whether you're getting there or being there, seeing rocks, rocks and rolls, both, both, rocks and rolls. <laughs> so, uh, I leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just love a chance to work with you when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Bye.